I don't think I've ever found a single legendary lord harder to confederate than Ming. Look here, we've got everything else and we've got him pigeonholed into a single province and he's still not buying it. But that's okay because it turns out on Legendary, even just surviving Ying's campaign is quite difficult. There's probably never been a Lord I've seen where Normal versus Legendary is such a ramp up in terms of difficulty. Even Kislev cannot match this one. The good thing is, once you're set up and established, it's actually not too bad. So today we're diving into Ying. Keep in mind, Ming is an easier start, but we're going to dive straight into the Stormlord herself and show you how you can achieve all of this territory in a relatively timely manner, but more importantly is how you survive these early steps here. It is actually much harder than you would think to get a hold of these gates through confederation and conquest, as well as stop yourself from being conquered through the initial successor state here. So let's dive into Legendary, no mods exploits, let's get into it. Here we are, start of a Legendary campaign. Now we have a few things we need to do. So first thing we're going to be watching for is our harmony here. Of course it tips within Yin and Yang, depending on what you have built. You can tip this with either Lords, which give three either way, Heroes, which give one, or any basically any building has an alignment and you can counter it with that. Ying is well, Ying inclined, so we need to offset her. So let's hire a Lord, always hire a Castle Lord. In this case, we're going to get Yang and we'll just throw them in here. So first move, we're going to move Ying up and destroy this army. We'll do it on the field. Here we are on the battlefield. Just remember that you've got your Ying Yang bonuses here. So anyone needs to be in touch with basically if they're a melee unit or a ranged unit, they need to be within this area here to get the said bonus. Definitely worth getting because the range ones also increase your rate of fire. We're going to cart them around with these horses here, try to divide them, and this sky junk is an absolute beast. Just let this thing rain death on and there should hopefully not be too much left by the time they get close. Because we've got our harmony and balance before the battle, we get Ancestral Warriors. Your Ancestral Warriors should be able to tie them up and just use your horses to run anyone else down. You should be able to win that without losing anyone. Move her to the very, very edge of the territory. Hire yourself another two peasant bowmen. For research, we're going to continue along the Yin line, okay? So we're gonna move our way all the way across here, but we want to do it by here. Each one of these will also give us one harmony in the Yin direction, which will offset any Yan buildings, as well as the Yan lords, which tend to be a bit more useful, particularly in these early stages. So we're just gonna have this line traveling across here. For the Ivory Road, we can choose our caravan location. Choose anyone you want. I'll just send them there, that looks good. I like to max the payload and send them out. Diplomacy. So the Celestial Loyalists and the Imperials, they are worth getting on side with. They are going to be the Jade Custodies which are around here. We may want to declare war on them a bit later. May being the operative word there. But the two ones that start closest to you, we want to keep them on side. There's a chance we'll be able to confederate them a little bit later, so keep them on side. Get a balanced deal, get the most you can out of them. There we go. Cool, what can we do with the Imperial Wardens? Same deal. You of course want those trade agreements. As a reward, you'll get this hero. Make sure they're tucked into Miao Ying's army. We're gonna knock down the barracks. First turn of every run, I know, I know. And we're gonna build the clay pit there. Give us some tradables. Turn two, we'll get our second lord and move them up here. Get them as close as you can in ambush stance. Up here, and then next turn, they'll be able to reach the snake gate. Take Ming and go. For this battle, just deploy on the most open front here. It's basically the opposite side that you should start on. Start the battle and then move everyone up in archer range and you should be able to pick them apart mostly from afar. Cool, the tower's down. Uh, just feel free to blast it apart, but always be mindful of your ammo. We've got more than enough ammo to take care of them this time. If you've got lots of ammo, shoot the towers down. If you, you balance the power bars a bit hazy and you might run out of ammo, don't worry about the towers, just try to avoid them. And we want to try to avoid any revolts, so let's just occupy. For leveling up, you can just continue along her magic line as soon as you've got Root Marcher. Earth Blood, of course, is essential, but none of these are really that important, but getting the two passes is nice. Again, working towards a magic line with your Astromancer. And finally, in terms of buildings, this is where you check your harmony. Currently, we are plus one Yang, so we need to offset that with plus one Ying. So let's go, always go for these ones first. So the industry buildings, i.e. the markets, they'll give you the money you need. And then going to the second preference, which is gold here. So, but these are all really, really good. So we're going to offset that with one yin there. Also, we've managed to obtain another military building. We'll just knock that down and hire ourselves another two peasants. All right, so you might see this beastman herd that they kind of run around here. It's good to kill them where it's convenient, but the, here's the deal. If you attack them now, we'll lose the movement to be able to reach this in the same turn. This is such a blessing to be able to reach a settlement in the same turn. We can always come back up and we will be coming back up. So they'll be there 
for us later. So we're gonna have to attack this army first. So we're gonna set up right on the front line here. They do have reinforcements. We need to kill them one army at a time. So we're just gonna try bombing the crap out of them. This is why harmony is so important. See this? These guys just do not break. They're really, really good. It's a good idea to shoot them until they shatter. Don't just till they break. Focus them down until you see the shatter flag. Stop them from ever coming back. Okay, that hasn't happened before. They That army is usually not there, but we roll with the punches, let's just roll with it. But yeah, it, it would normally be easier, but this means that we won't have to fight this army later. Take the replenishment. Normally you can go straight into the province. This That time we couldn't, but now we can still get it on the same turn. And of course making sure we just group hug and earth blood to heal ourselves back up. So we should finish this battle stronger than before we even started it, which I always find very, very amusing. Alright, they're all healed, end the fight, and of course we're going to just occupy, we want to try and avoid the revolts at this point, because we're going to have enough fights, just believe me. Now in turn of edicts you can put here, there's a few good ones for this faction. We're going to start off with control, but 20% less campaign movement for the people that are trespassing is actually really, really useful. Don't discount that, we will use that a bit later. So let's hire ourselves another couple of peasant archers there. And we'll just check which buildings we've got. So look, we're now out by one yin. So we need to oppose that with a yang building. Get the income building there. Good. Happy with that. We may as well upgrade both of these. And take a look at the snake gate. It's time to now occupy this. So let's take it. Colonize it. And of course, build it up to that first level. So that's good. Now around this time, these guys will probably start to get hit. Now, as early as turn 4, I've seen, or turn 5, I've seen them get broken through, and then you have to start dealing with armies outside here. This faction here is one of the biggest concerns as well, so they are going to attack us, and we are going to have to deal with it, so we're going to have to make a pass back there sooner than later. And for the gates, they have their own unique ones, always for the start, go with growth and more construction reduction. So we're dealing with the Lawless here, and the Imperial Wardens here. If we can obviously confederate either of those, then that's really what we're looking for in these early stages. We'll just go quick deal, and these guys are now willing to deal with us. Let's sign ourselves up. And remember, the more deals you have with someone, the better things going to be, and the faster you'll grow your relations with them. Our caravan is also under attack, so we're going to fight that. Turn 4, we can use the magic sundial, and then we're going to turn it to celestial leg, which will give us more growth and income, after which we'll then switch it back to great bastion, most probably, because defense and supplies really important. They're not really talked about much, and they should be. So we're turn 4 now, we've built up our gate, so we can now hire some troops here. Now, if you don't see an army here, have a look up there. You can even use your movement. Move up, say, I'll show you how to do it. So make sure you only move up, say, under 50%, right? Just to see if you can uncover and see. There you go. So he's got an army there. They're going to be okay. All right, that's super important that you do this. If any, you don't learn anything from this run, this is it. You might see an army besieging the city. If you see one besieging it there, turn four, they will break through turn five and then they can just unimpededly just keep coming through here. So that's a huge, huge issue if that does happen, okay? So they're gonna be there or there. If they're up there, then you can send your Lord here, hide him in ambush stance, he'll raise the gate on turn four. Turn five, go up and recolonize the gate. Now, you won't have any troops to defend it, but you will still have the towers and you can actually do some damage to the army when it comes back through. So it's an expensive way of damage control, but it's one you can use. We'll go to the defensive supplies first because the towers are really important on these. We'll get the growth next time. The other really horrible thing that's going to happen is these guys will have probably one to two armies ready. But they'll have a full stack and then some. So we need to be able to protect it. We're going to hire ourselves another Yan Sorcerer. Put them in there and hire two peasant archers. We need to keep on the recruitment as best as we can because this turn we're going to move over here. Now the mines of Nanyang might get sacked, okay? I know it's terrible to say it, but it can actually happen, especially if you possibly lose one of these gates or even one that you don't have control. So we're going to upgrade Nanli first and then we'll go and take the Shrine of Alchemy. We can get some alliances signed. Let's do it. So she's feeling the heat due to the Norskins sitting at the gate outside. Just do a quick deal. Any trade partners? Nope. All good, and we are a ways away from Confederation. Turn 5, first up, let's take the Shrine of Alchemy. 
It's actually surprising how much you can get done with the first person view of this uh, of the sky junk. It is so much fun. This is like a game within a game. Easy done. Hard two more peasant archers, and now we are also in a new province. So this will hopefully become our second province that we conquer. Second, you can try to rush for the capital here. This was also a strategy I experimented with because that's going to be much easier to hold due to being a capital. The problem is, is that you go too far away. You can't come and rescue this and this is very much in danger of the Zinch faction down here. Now we've been besieged at our snake gate here. What we'll do is we're just going to do a manual battle here because on the battlefield we should be able to take care of these guys quite easily. So this will be a bit of a difficult battle. We've got two lots of horses here and we're going to use them to try and uh, distract and peel away some of their units away from their main force here. Uh, move up and we've got ourselves a choke point here which we can absolutely use. But we don't have a lot of archers. These are the only archers we have. As usual, I've hotkeyed my archers three, Lord number one, and then supporting caster number two. Make sure we focus down one unit at a time. And we're gonna get a nice meaty rear charge with our cavalry. So, Dragon's Breath. And then of course, we've got Wind Blast. The combination of these two wind spells really is great for our crowd control. I managed to do this without losing too many troops and more importantly absolutely bodied its forces and will take some money. So this is a really great source of income for you. Having a look up here and yeah, he's in a bit of trouble there so there's a really good chance he's going to lose his holdings there. We are going to venture out and just take and finish off this force because we can. I don't want them kicking around again and we'll hire ourselves two more peasant archers. Now, if I thought that they would lose this gate next turn, this is when you could send your lord up here and then go to colonize it next turn because he, he won't move through. If he wrecks it and raises it, he can't move any further. So there's always that. Uh, it looks like we've probably got another turn, so we'll heal up and get those extra archers. And next turn, we're going to go back damage control because this guy is going to be ready to attack soon. You've got an ally and the turn after you've uh, got your alliance we can get an allied mission so let's find who the easiest target is and it's almost certainly going to be the guys at their gate. Accept that mission and this will help build up our allegiance which means we can eventually steal their army which will mean confederating them will be much easier. Let's double check. Oh they want the defensive alliance let's take that. Start of turn six and the good thing about allies is they build outposts and this guy's building one in the snake gate so let's also upgrade our snake gate and build ourselves two more peasant archers because we've had a breakthrough here. Yes they will typically break through around this time and now we have angry Norsemen marching around. Also turn six is around the time where the Zinch watchers start to make their march around. Now often I've actually had two armies down here ready to attack this settlement. If that happens, they will sack it. If you beat them up really, really badly, they won't take it. So that's kind of the best case scenario if that does happen. Now, these beastmen again, they've wandered around. Let's just kill them now. We've got a really good chance to kill them, so we're going to do it. And they've retreated as we expected. Let's finish them off. And easily done. As always, try to get their lord just for a bit of extra money. And now with our remaining movement, we need to force march ourselves back up here because, like I said, we could get attacked any time. And if we can stop ourselves even getting sacked, we are in a really good position. So taking out this city is the next priority. Okay, so we should be able to hold them off here, but we need to make sure that is wiped out. Check diplomacy as always, and celestial laws do a mission. So let's see if we can find someone who's worth killing, and this guy looks like a great candidate. I'm not going to build any outposts yet, I don't want them to be too powerful, it might be in our interest if they do lose an outpost because it means that they'll be weaker and they might want to confederate a bit sooner. Since it looks like we won't lose this settlement, I'm relatively comfortable in upgrading it. Well, we've been attacked over the end turn, let's do this, we should be able to do this with very minimal loss. It's really worth your time getting good at learning to defend your settlements, uh, keep in mind, so when you highlight any tower, it'll show you the supply point. These ones are really good because we can defend behind here quite easily. So I often find it's better to save up for the tier 3 towers which will require 1400 resources and we start with a thousand. So it's worth the wait. Choke point off one of these factions and uh, the other ones is coming through here. And what we're going to do is we're going to tease them with our horses and this cavalry unit will end up... There we go. So the, the fastest and most dangerous units, we're going to send them on a wild horse chase. And now that's going to take longer for us to get flanked. And we're just going to bottleneck them off here and then build the cannon tower. There we go, we've sent their forces into disarray. 
and that's one of our targets, actually two of our targets down in single battle, so that'll build our legion points with both of these guys, which is exactly what we want. But this also means we need to pick ourselves some new targets. So I think these uh, Zinch guys are good, and this also shows you where they are. Now it's not uncommon for them to do this, they'll break through, but then they'll want to smash both of these uh, down. So this is actually a good thing, because it'll help us clear off um, the rest of their invasion. Let's just finish him. Uh, give ourselves wall of fire and finish him off. And we'll take the replenishment. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to move her up as high as we can, maintaining 25% remaining movement. And she's going to get the dragon gate for us next turn. This has worked in multiple runs and you can get the other gate by turn 8 because they basically always lose it before now and this gives you a chance to take it. And hope, the only risk is if this gets attacked again without another lord there to guard it. So you can hire another lord there if you want to be really conservative. But what I'll do instead is I'll finish these guys off and I'll send this lord up there. So, dragon breath these guys. Yep. Okay, before we move up, let's just check the balance of power to see how they're looking. Ah, oh, here we are, okay. So, they are basically just a bit underneath us, so that means I feel pretty confident that we could win an engagement. So, there's a low chance of this working, right? But either way, we need to recruit. So, I'm going to move Ying about there. Still ambush range there. And we're going to reinforce these guys here, so they won't be able to resist if she stays hidden they'll probably take the bait and they'll attack this guy but this gives her the chance to hire two extra peasants because the bastion threat level is actually quite low let's just finally see because here's the other thing to watch out for the moment you get yeah so they've got another army kicking around and I can't see that army so we can't take that but we could look at taking this let's get her Yes! Yes, we got them. Okay, if this doesn't work, then you still would get the chance to attack them, and either way, we can attack them, probably at the settlement as well this turn, but this is exactly what we wanted. You, it's so much easier to take this fight when they're out of the settlement. Let's just auto-resolve this. Because we want to eliminate the entire army, doesn't matter if we take a bit of a hit, that's fine. Just use replenishment. And here we are, guys. <laughs> We have a bug in all its high glory. Excellent stuff. Um, try to ignore that. Uh, the, the upcoming patch I'm sure will address that. Uh, so we can now get ourselves up to the Dragon Gate. Now, we're going to lose this the next turn. Okay, so that's just going to be what happens. So we have this army down here. We will need to hire another couple of uh, peasants. We'll get Talents of the Night. It's an awesome spell and you can use it while in her dragon form. And we'll just get Uranus Thunderbolt and uh, Wind Blast, they're both pretty useful. The best way to enter is actually just here, right? Because we don't get completely surrounded by towers when we set up. So the thing is though, you want to be nice and skinny going in there because this is a pain in the ass settlement. There's not a lot of room to move. Hold Alt, move everyone right up. And keep in mind, this is is going to be quite tight with ammo and when one does come through you've got to make sure you completely kill it and that is the reward for all of that hard work oh, I lost my horses damn it ah oh, well we'll knock down the military building two more units being built there and hopefully that holds out just all right so nine we have a bit of a threat here. We've been besieged at Shrine of the Alchemist. However, this isn't part of our main province. So if we lose this, it's not the end of the world. So we're not that worried by it. And that army isn't that tough. Um, what we're gonna do is send this guy down as a relief army. So we'll head down this way first. And we're just gonna force March to give ourselves the most options here. It looks like we're going to lose this next turn. Now you could do a couple things here. You could force march up to try and save that but you've got a massive disadvantage there so if you lose that battle you could be screwed so that's the only problem if you do that you can try to do that if you're that dead set and keeping it the other option is is just to basically just sit back and recruit so but first we'll do is we'll take this guy out 
So what we'll do is we're gonna move ourselves up here, and from here we'll hire ourselves two more bowmen. All right, so it's over the end turn. We've been attacked by this army. We've got no hope in hell of winning this, obviously, but if we ought to resolve that, he won't come off with a single scratch on him. I like to role play. If I lose more units, so be it. I don't really mind. It just has to be efficient enough. So they will typically want to run up like this, and they'll have the option of either coming up here or up here to this high ground, and then, of course, the ultimate capture point up here. But now, here we've got this key building here, and this, as long as that doesn't fall, we can keep towers here, here, there and there. Like, see this? You can get all sorts of good stuff on these guys here. So here we are, turn 10. So we're down the south area here, we're going to bring our relief army up and we're going to put her in ambush stance. I want to take them on there. If they do attack and take that, that's fine. We'll fight it manually and we'll be able to absolutely wreck them there. From here, we can just build up a bigger force and then take that capital. Um, if these are empty, it means Snitch has taken them. Yeah, so they've got three. But that's okay, I don't mind that because uh, he's not going to attack us just yet. So, and also, in another couple of turns, we'll be able to take that. And then we will own, in it, probably easily by turn 20, we'll be able to conquer all of this. This guy's this side of the wall, let's take him out and make him pay. You will see more... Um, Jade Warriors on the front line, but we just haven't needed them because you probably noticed we've been defending a whole lot in this particular run. Alright, and there we go. Let's take the numbers that we can get to replenish our forces. Finish them off. And we are going to finally retake this. We'll colonize it. We'll lose a lot of our troops, but we'll be able to hold it going forward because we've actually got the numbers. Now what we'll do also is we want to recruit some new units. We're going to pass a couple of these newbie units into the better. They will attack, they'll try to hold out, but we'll be alright. Uh, the way we can also guarantee this is now that we've got multiple gates is that we can use them to reinforce each other. So we're up one yin, we need to hire a yang a sorceress, put her in there and get two archers. We can upgrade this as well. Now you've got the defensive supplies, growth is the next most important thing. They'll be able to make sure they hold that. And that is how you manage to get yourself a good start in Cathay for the first 10 turns. So the biggest issue is trying to not let them spill through here. We did a great job this particular campaign of uh, putting the plug in the hole and stopping them from coming in and spilling into the Empire. By using a Lord just to take the gate means you hold them there because they have to lose the movement for that one turn. But keep in mind that only applies to the army that was besieging. The other two can come through. So. Uh, we've also managed to get a strong army here, which will be able to repel them. And you can even start upgrading some of your money-making buildings. And once we've got that knocked down, we'll be earning a lot of money. We've got a lot of combat ahead of us. And yeah, you can even start looking towards confederations with these guys. It will really depend. As you can see, they're probably not really keen for it. <laughs> It'll really depend when they're under threat, so if this top gate does break through, that's when these guys might bend to us. But until then, the other way you can try to get them on side is by declaring war on the Jade Custodians. The Jade Custodians are here, so if what we do is upgrade to a military alliance, we can rope these guys in and we basically make it so all this here will be versing these guys over here. But other than that, this is a really, really good start really comfortable. You can basically start to pick your engagements now. I would personally go down and take the capital next. They might still hold this. You can take that. You can even take that and trade it with Ming for a defensive or a military alliance. That's something you can do. You, keeping Ming small might be part of your confederation strategy, but I've tried it. I've tried it. You can't guarantee that that will get your confederation with him. Right, so try to limit him, but don't build your strategy around confederating with him. It's probably not going to happen. Coming through here, so take that, and then you've cut off this uh, frontier. Try to take these Skaven settlements here, and then from there, you can even help these guys try to uh, conquer up here, confederate them. And that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you have found it enjoyable, please consider a like or a sub. It really, really helps out. Let us know in the comments which one you want to see next. I'll see you next time.